Kinetics is the study of the rates of chemical reactions. For any reacting system, thermodynamics can be used to predict whether the reaction will spontaneously occur. The kinetics of the reaction indicate how fast the reaction actually goes. Most of the biological reactions that occur in the cells of living organisms are greatly sped up by protein catalysts called enzymes. Recall that catalysts dramatically increase the rate of a reaction without affecting the equilibrium. The objectives for this exercise on enzyme kinetics are to comprehend how enzyme kinetics relates to the chemical kinetics presented in general chemistry courses, to understand how kinetic parameters are experimentally determined, and to learn about the Michaelis-Menten equation and the meaning of Km and Vmax. Our first objective for this exercise is to show how enzyme kinetics relates to the elementary kinetics you studied in general chemistry. Let's begin with a simple reaction, a unimolecular reaction that can be described as A being converted into B. Recall that since there is only one reactant, this is a first-order reaction whose rate or velocity can be described as the disappearance of the reactant over time or the appearance of the product over time. The reaction rate is represented by the slopes of these lines and is not constant. For this first-order reaction, the rate is directly proportional to the concentration of reactant. Here, K is the first-order rate constant for the reaction. Although the rate constant does not change, the velocity of the reaction begins to decrease as the concentration of the reactant diminishes and the product accumulates. The rate of the reaction eventually slows to zero as the product of the initial forward reaction becomes a reactant for the reverse reaction. Equilibrium is the point where the forward and reverse reaction rates are equal, and the overall rate of the reaction is zero. In a simple enzyme-catalyzed reaction, the reactants are labeled S for substrates and products are labeled P. This looks like our first example, a simple first-order reaction in which substrate is converted to product. Similarly, the rate of an enzyme-catalyzed reaction is either the disappearance of the substrate or the formation of the product over time. As the reaction proceeds, the reverse reaction begins to compete with the forward reaction until the rates are equal and equilibrium has been reached. The rate equation for an enzyme-catalyzed reaction with a single substrate is the same as the rate equation for the simple non-enzymatic reaction, but only when the concentration of substrate is so low that the enzyme has very little chance to convert it to product. Under these unique conditions, it appears that the reaction is first order with respect to substrate. However, this special case is much too limiting and rarely applies in biological and experimental systems. Consequently, biochemists must use a different model to describe the kinetics of biological reactions catalyzed by enzymes. The kinetics of an enzyme-catalyzed reaction can be studied when the concentration of the enzyme is small compared to the concentration of the substrate. As long as the substrate is in large excess over enzyme, Altering its concentration does not change the rate. This is quite different from the first-order reaction in the previous example, where the rate depended on the substrate concentration. Here, the rate does not depend on the substrate concentration, and the reaction is said to be zero-order with respect to substrate. Near the turn of the 20th century, Adrian Brown first discovered this conflicting behavior of enzyme-catalyzed reactions it became apparent to him that the substrate must form a complex with the enzyme. This observation marked the beginning of the study of enzyme kinetics. <laughs>
Brown correctly deduced that a zero-order reaction with respect to substrate occurred when the enzyme was saturated with substrate. Essentially, the limited number of active sites put a ceiling on how fast the reaction could proceed. Because the enzyme concentration is rate-limiting, the rate is independent of substrate concentration. The zero-order rate constant is referred to as the maximal velocity, or Vmax. To account for this kinetic behavior caused by the substrate's interaction with enzyme, the model for an enzyme-catalyzed reaction must include an enzyme-substrate complex, or ES complex. The reaction scheme is shown here. The rate constants K1 and K-1 are the forward and reverse rate constants for the formation of the ES complex, and K2 is the rate at which the ES complex converts the bound substrate into product. Notice that in order to simplify this model, we assume that the product formation step is irreversible, that is, there is no K-2. Catalysts are generally not considered reactants because they facilitate reactions without being altered. However, in an enzyme-catalyzed reaction, the enzyme does participate as a pseudoreactant because it must bind and form a complex with substrate, and the availability of its active sites affects the overall rate of the reaction. We have seen that for an enzyme-catalyzed reaction, we can write a simple rate equation only when the concentration of substrate is saturating or when the concentration of enzyme is saturating. In between these two extremes, we need to use a slightly more complex rate equation called the Michaelis-Menten equation. The Michaelis-Menten equation is limited to the initial rate V0 so that we can ignore the possibility of the product accumulating and undergoing the reverse reaction. The Michaelis-Menten equation and its hyperbolic graph describe how the reaction rate varies with substrate concentration for a one-substrate reaction. It is important to note that despite the similarities in shape, this graph is not a graph of the concentration of product forming over time. This graph shows the reaction progress of an enzyme-catalyzed reaction. The Michaelis-Menten model makes a steady-state assumption, meaning that the concentration of the ES complex remains constant. This assumption is valid only when the concentration of substrate is much greater than the total enzyme concentration. Use your mouse to investigate the various parts of the graph. Vmax is the maximal velocity that can be achieved by an enzyme under the special case of saturating substrate concentration. Km is a lumped rate constant, incorporating all the rate constants for ES and P formation, K1, K-1, and K2. It is equal to the substrate concentration that gives one-half saturation of the enzyme. It is therefore also equal to the substrate concentration at one-half the Vmax. For a reaction that follows the Michaelis-Menten kinetic model, the Km is inversely related to the proportion of total enzyme, or ET, which is in complex with substrate. In other words, the higher the Km, the lower the fraction of enzyme with a bound substrate. Although loosely related, the Km is not the same as the enzyme's affinity for substrate, for it also takes into account the decomposition of the ES complex to product. The most useful definition for Km is that it is a constant that describes the dependence of V0 on S and dictates the steepness of the shape of the Michaelis-Menten curve. Experiment with the sliders to change Vmax and Km. Note how the shape of the line changes with Km.
To help you understand the hyperbolic relationship between the substrate concentration and the rate of an enzyme-catalyzed reaction, which is described by the Michaelis-Menten equation, we will now demonstrate a kinetic experiment. To experimentally determine the relationship between substrate concentration and initial velocity, a biochemist sets up a series of test tubes for the reaction. Each tube contains a constant amount of enzyme, but the amount of the substrate placed in each tube varies. For easy analysis, the biochemist often chooses a substrate that yields a product that has a different color or different fluorescence. In order to measure the initial velocity, the reaction is only run for a short length of time. This is done so that only a small percentage of substrate is converted into product, and therefore there will be no kinetic contribution from the reverse reaction of product formation, and K-2 can still be ignored. The amount of product formed over time is monitored. The amount of product formed divided by the brief time of incubation is the slope of the early linear phase of the reaction. This rate of product formation is the initial velocity of the reaction. Note that the tubes containing the most substrate yield the highest initial velocities. A plot of initial velocity versus substrate concentration yields a hyperbolic curve consistent with the Michaelis-Menten model of enzyme activity. The important kinetic parameters Vmax and Km can be estimated from this graph. The Vmax is the point where the enzyme is fully saturated and cannot achieve a higher initial velocity Vmax and is therefore the upper limit for V0. The Km is the substrate concentration that corresponds to one half of the Vmax. More precise values for Vmax and Km can be obtained by using a curve fitting program. Remember that the Michaelis-Menten equation is a mathematical expression for a hyperbola. Now imagine that you are a biochemist attempting to characterize the kinetic behavior of a new mutant of the motor protein kinesin. You will need to set up reaction tubes and collect data to determine the values for Vmax and Km. You will be monitoring the ATPase activity of the kinesin by quantifying the conversion of radio-labeled ATP to ADP. Plan your experiment by indicating the proper order of the steps. First, prepare six 1 milliliter reaction samples. Use the micropipetter to add samples dropwise to the tubes. Be careful, sometimes the order of addition matters. Be sure to leave room in the tube for substrate, and do not add substrate to any tube until all samples are ready. While computers can easily determine kinetic parameters from a hyperbolic Michaelis-Menten plot, these graphs are unwieldy for visually estimating values for Vmax and Km. For this purpose, the Michaelis-Menten equation can be rearranged to a linear equation with the form y equals mx plus b. The resulting plot is called a Lineweaver-Burke, or double reciprocal plot. Km and Vmax can be readily obtained from the x and y intercepts of a line Weaver Burke plot. The y intercept is 1 over Vmax, and the x intercept is negative 1 over Km.
Try varying the Vmax and the Km on the following graphs. Chemical kinetics and enzyme kinetics are related, but because of the complex of enzyme with bound substrate, enzyme kinetics only correlates well with chemical kinetics in the extreme cases with very limited substrate or vast excess of substrate. michaelis menten enzyme kinetics describes the behavior of enzymes over a wide range of substrate concentrations. Two important kinetic parameters are Vmax and Km, Vmax is the maximal velocity of an enzyme-catalyzed reaction at saturating substrate concentration. Km is loosely related to substrate affinity, but a more correct description is that it determines the shape of the michaelis menten hyperbolic curve. Kinetic experiments can quantify how the rate of an enzyme-catalyzed reaction changes with the concentration of substrate. Data obtained can be plotted and fit to the michaelis menten equation or rearranged into a double reciprocal plot. From these graphs, the kinetic parameters Km and Vmax can be obtained. Kinetics is the study of the rates of chemical reactions.